Hi friends, welcome back to Quiet Time. We're going to read chapter 8 of our third Humphrey book. Let's take a look at how many pages long this one is. Oh, it's actually a pretty short one. Less than 10 pages. Okay. All right, chapter 8 on page 83. Double trouble. Trouble rhymes with double. Believe me, I was thinking about double trouble that night. Art's good grade on the math test was cause for celebration. Art becoming friends with Paul was cause for celebration. Seth sitting still, or at least not popping out of his chair every few seconds, was cause for celebration. But I had not done one thing to help Miranda, whom I had gotten into trouble, and now Mandy clearly was having some kind of problem that I didn't understand. Lately, I'd been spinning more to keep my mind off my friend's troubles. I was spinning so much, I wasn't eating all the food I had stored away in various places in my cage. All hamsters know that it's a good idea to have some food stashed away in case of emergency. Og being a classroom pet may not be an important job, but it's, an easy, it's not an easy one either, I squeaked to my neighbor, because we've got to try to keep all of our friends out of trouble. <clears throat> Boing, boing, he twanged back at me. He's a very wise frog. I'm worried about Miranda, I breathlessly explained without stopping my wheel. Boing, Og did a giant leap. And I'm worried about Mandy, I said. Boing, boing, Og jumped up and down twice. I knew he was worried about Mandy as well, and I can't think of one single thing to do that would help either one of them. Can you? From Og, silence. This was not a good sign. I got out my notebook and decided to make a plan. To make a plan, it helps to make a list. So I wrote, plan to help Miranda. Number one. I stared at that one and stared some more. No matter how hard I stared at it, I couldn't think of anything to write. The only way I could help Miranda was to prove to Mrs. Brisbane and the whole class that she didn't leave my door unlocked. And the only way I could do that was to let everyone see that my, my lock that didn't lock, which meant that someone would put a new lock on my cage and I'd never be able to get out again. I wouldn't be able to have many more exciting adventures. And more important, it would be a lot harder for me to help my friends. I closed my notebook and went into my sleeping hut. I couldn't sleep because every time I closed my eyes, I saw Miranda's face in front of me. I couldn't stand that for long, so I crawled out of my sleeping hut and went over to the side of the cage closest to Og. I tried to make a plan, but I didn't get far. Og sat there like the lumpy, bumpy frog he is and blinked his eyes. That is, the only plan I can think of would mean I'd be locked in my cage forever. Og sat motionless as the rock he was sitting on. Well, you must have some ideas. I was practically pleading with him now. He didn't even look at me, but I'd learned an interesting fact in science class. Frogs can see all around them without moving their heads because they have three, 360 degree vision. That's good because they don't have much in the way of necks. I know you can see me, Og, and I know you can hear me. Even though you don't have any ears, that I can see. Are you ignoring me? It appeared that he was. Are you trying to think of a plan too? Og jumped up and let out a very loud boing. I was so startled I jumped backwards and hit my head on my wheel. Our strange conversation, which to humans would sound like a golden hamster squeaking and a green frog twanging, ended abruptly when the door handle rattled. The lights came on and Aldo pushed, in, pushed his cart into the room. I'm back, said Aldo. His greeting didn't sound warm and cheery as usual. In fact, he parked his cart in front of my cage and let out a loud yawn. Sorry, fellas, I'm kind of tired tonight. I've been studying and writing papers and working hard and, ah, uh, you don't want to hear about my problems, do you? Yes, 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 I squeaked, because if your friends won't listen to your problems, who will? Aldo pulled up a chair and took out his dinner. He yawned again. I've been working and studying more than I'm sleeping, I guess. I'm beat. After he chewed his sandwich in silence for a few minutes, he opened his bag. Whoa, I must be tired. I almost forgot. Humphrey, here is a tomato. Thanks. Thanks to Aldo Amato. It was a perfectly plump cherry tomato, the kind that usually makes my whiskers wiggle with joy, but I'd been thinking so much about my problems, I didn't feel much like eating. Thanks, I squeaked. Aldo didn't notice that I was unusually quiet because he was yawning again. 
you know guys, I think I'll take a short nap. I work twice as fast if I can just rest my eyes for a few minutes, right? To my amazement, Aldo rolled up his jacket, sat in, his, in a chair, using the jacket as a pillow, put his head on the desk, and closed his eyes. He was sound asleep in a matter of seconds. He really must have been tired. It was quiet in room 26 with only the tick, tick, tick of the clock, which I couldn't hear in the daytime, counting off each second. Do you think he'll sleep for a long time, I squeaked Og. After all, he has work to do. Og dove into the water and went for a swim. Big help he was. Aldo looked peaceful, dozing there. Still, the hands of the clock kept moving round and round. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. At one point, Aldo moved. Good, he was waking up, but instead he rolled his head to the other side and kept on sleeping. Og, how many rooms do you think he has to clean, I asked. After all, Aldo had a big responsibility, getting all of the rooms in Longfellow School clean each night. Classrooms have a way of getting messy with squished crayons, chalk dust, and lots of scuff marks on the floor. Ox splashed again as he climbed back onto his rock. When I glanced over, I saw he was staring down at Aldo, too. I wouldn't want him to lose his job. I knew how terrible Miranda felt when she lost her job. I, Og let out a big, twangy boing. Aldo didn't move a muscle. He was really sound asleep. I checked the clock. Aldo had been sleeping for one hour. At this rate, I wasn't sure he could get his job done, at least not as well as he usually did it. We'd better wake him, I squeaked to Og. I took my friend's silence to mean yes. On the count of three, okay, Oggy? One, two, three. Three, Og and I let loose with a series of boings and squeaks. It was quite amazing, even alarming. Aldo remained fast asleep. How else could one small hamster and one small frog wake up our sleeping friend? Then I remembered something that was bad, bad, bad. However, in this case, it might turn out to be good, good, good. Once, when I was riding the bus home with Lower Your Voice AJ, Mean Martin Bean was a bully, with the bus bully, told him to be quiet. When AJ kept talking, Martin took some paper, wadded it up in a little ball, and put it in his mouth to wet it. Then he threw it, and it hit AJ in the neck. Yuck. Yuck, AJ had said, rubbing his neck. That wad of wet paper made an impression and gave me an idea for a plan. I gathered together some of my bedding material, which is shredded paper, and tried to mold it into a ball. Being a clean and sanitary hamster, I wasn't about to put that stuff in my mouth. Instead, I went to my water bottle and tapped it so a few drops trickled down onto the paper until I was able to shape it into a ball. It worked in between, I worked it in between my paws until it was around and, and smooth as a baseball. I went to the side of my cage and looked down at Aldo who was sleeping peacefully. Then I had a terrible thought. I was a small hamster after all. How could I be sure I could throw the ball so it would hit Aldo in the neck and wake him up? I'd have to throw it with all my might. Even though I was strong from spinning on my wheel and climbing ladders and tree branches, I was tiny compared to Aldo. Then I remembered gravity. Mrs. Brisbane had explained gravity to us in science. She is an excellent teacher. Gravity is a force that pulls things toward the ground. It's the reason we don't float above the ground all the time, which might be fun for a while, but not all the time. I realized I would have the power of gravity on my side. The ball would naturally go down, and if I aimed it correctly and put all my force behind it, I should be able to wake Aldo up. I stopped to think about what I was doing. It was wrong for Martin to throw that spitball at AJ. Could it be wrong to do the same thing to help Aldo keep his job? I explained my mission to Og. I'm ready to fire on Aldo and wake him up. Do you think it's a good idea? Boing, 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 boing. I think he was agreeing making sure I could clear the bars on my cage. I concentrated on a small portion of Aldo's neck and let loose. The ball slammed downward directly towards Aldo's neck. I crossed my paws, hoping this would work. Bingo, that paper ball hit him square in the neck. His hand went up to rub the spot and best of all, his eyes open. Hmm, he mumbled sleepily. He sat up and glanced at the clock. Mamma mia, I've been asleep for an hour. Aldo leapt up to his feet, grabbed his broom. I thought I'd just nap for a few minutes. You guys should have woke me up. If I lose this job, I won't be able to afford to go to school. This is the last page of chapter eight. Sometimes humans don't give credit where credit is due, but all I cared about was Aldo keeping his job. 
Whew, I'm going to have to hustle to get all my work done. I do feel better, though. Aldo pushed his broom around the floor like an artist painting a masterpiece. We saw a great film showing a famous art artist at work. I like seeing movies in class. He missed the spitball on the floor, but at least he didn't notice it. Whew. He finished cleaning the room in half his usual time. Gotta run, guys. Catch you tomorrow night, he said as he raced out the door with his cart. Og and I sat in silence for a while, listening to the tick, tick, ticking away. I'm sure glad that worked, I finally squeaked. Og jumped so high, he hit the cover of his glass house that almost popped the top. Boing, boing, he twanged. For once, I knew exactly what he meant. Even though I'd kept Aldo out of trouble, I still had a lot more work to do. Our uh, title to our paper at the end of this chapter is Longfellow Custodian Attends Local College. Aldo Amato says the extra hours of studying will be well worth it once he becomes a teacher. The Humphrey Herald. All right, and since today is Friday, we will pick back up on Chapter 9 on Monday on page 92. Oh my goodness, we're already almost at page 100, and look at this. This is all the pages that we've read. This is all the pages that we still need to read. I think we're a little over halfway through our book. It's pretty awesome, guys. Have a good rest.